Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today we're going to be working on finishing our quilts on our home sewing machine and we're going to be using some full line stencils so you can learn how to create the muscle memory that's needed to do free motion quilting on your machine by using a stencil to help get that ingrained in your head. Today we're gonna to be working with the Daisy background. This is a large stencil and it's a nice all over meander. It's very whimsical, so it's really great for any of your summertime or your floral quilts. Spring would work really well for this too, or anything girly. This would look great for either an adult or especially for a little girl with these tiny little daisies. And it's not that challenging to get down. What we're gonna do is we're going to follow the line to stitch in and then we're going to loop around the daisies and then come out to the center and then just do some loop-de-loops till we get to the next one and we're just going to keep working our way in starting at one half of the flower and eventually using that circle in the center to come back out. As always we're going to be using our pounce pad to go with this. I'm using pink today because we've got a blue fabric so it's going to show up really well. Um, this comes in blue, pink, and white. The white will iron away. The pink and the blue you have to brush off or wash it off when you are all done. Um, a lot of it will come off just in the quilting process so there won't be that much left. Um, but you want to have a color that is going to contrast with the colors you're working with. So if you're doing a girly quilt that's say lavender green and white then you could either go with a blue or a pink because that's going to um, show up on either of those. But if you're going with a pink quilt, then you definitely are going to want to hit some blue. So let's get started here. And just so you guys know, I do a lot of these practice pieces on uh, just test sandwiches. So this is two fat quarters layered together with batting in between to make my quilt sandwich. And I can really easily fit two of these large stencils. So I've got one up here and I can easily fit another one down here so I can practice on two passes. And when we do these um, classes in person, usually we can take people from absolute beginners working on a meander to being able to quilt feathers in two hours with these stencils. And it's super, super easy once you start to realize that there's a line to follow and it really can help improve your quilt team very quickly. All right, so here's how this works. We've got the pounce pad and this part here is like a bank topper from when you were a kid. So you're just gonna pop off the plastic, you're gonna fill it up to the top with the chalk that comes with it, and then you are going to bang it really hard against a hard surface like your tabletop 50 times. If it's the first time you're filling it, you're gonna repeat that and fill it another, fill it up to the top and bang it another 50 times. If you're just refilling, just banging 50 times is plenty. But what you're looking for is to have everything look nice and saturated like this, where you can really see the pink all over that cloth applicator. And that will mean that it's really easy to then swipe it across your quilt top. So I'm gonna give this a little bang. It's been a little while since I've used it. So that way the chalk will just push through these guides here. It's basically the same uh, material as screen printing for a t-shirt where the uh, ink is sort of pushed through, but in this case chalk that is removable gets pushed through to make your quilting designs easy to follow. So just so I can show you guys the repeat on this, I've got everything nice and lined up on the end and that way I'm going to have a little bit up here where I can get my repeat in there so you can see how to do that. But what I do here is I start by holding everything together with my fingertips and just swiping across. And you can see, because I've just banged it, that that pink is really coming out here. It gets a little bit lighter in subsequent bits. But the big thing is, even though this is called a pounce pad, you're tempted to like bang it, like pounce it, but you want to swipe it. If you swipe it, it'll come off great. If you pounce it, it's not gonna come off the way you should. So before I move this too far, I wanna peel this back and make sure that everything is looking the way it, it should. All right, it looks like everything transferred really well. It looks like I could get a little bit more down here. Let's go over that a little bit. All right, that looks really good. Everything is transferred really well. So now I'm going to line it up with the previous one. So you can see my line ends here and my next part starts there as well. So I'm just gonna line this up and kind of pull it back and bring it up so that way 
this line hits right on here. And in this case, since it has that loop-de-loop, -loop, I'm gonna line it up so that way the tip of the loop-de-loop -loop is right where the bottom one is and it will fit in really nicely there. Once I'm happy with that placement, I'm just gonna repeat. and get that on there. All right, so we have a little bit of double vision here. No big deal, you just pick which line you wanna follow. So I've done a couple things to get ready to quilt. First, I put on my machiner's quilting gloves. They've got little grippies on the fingertips to help you move the fabric a little easier. And they're pretty lightweight. So right now I'm filming in the summertime, the air is off because otherwise you would hear it on the camera and I'm not gonna get too overheated with that. You wanna lower your feed dogs if that's possible on your machine. Otherwise, just set your stitch length down to zero because you are the one who are gonna be creating your stitch length for that. And I put my free motion quilting foot on there. It's also called a darning foot. So check your manual to see if it came with one. Otherwise, you can order one for your machine. We have universal ones that fit low shank machines and most home sewing machines are low shank. All right, so we are gonna get started here. You can see here that I'm gonna start up here and then I'm gonna quilt my first daisy and I'm just gonna quilt right into that center and I'm gonna quilt my center bit and then kind of do my loop-de-loops around. And then when I get to the center again, I'm gonna scroll out and then come out the other side so I can keep moving around the quilt pretty easily. It's a pretty small flower, um, but the design in between it is pretty loose, so it's not gonna be that challenging to do. The other thing, normally I quilt with my hands like this, but for the sake of you guys being able to see, I'm gonna have my left hand drop to the side. So otherwise you won't be able to see in the side camera. And so when you're doing it, keep in mind, you wanna keep your hands as close together as possible that as far as any ways you'll be allowed on your surface. I do have an extension table on my machine, which helps me be able to do this a little bit better, have a little bit more space to work. All right, so I'm gonna start by putting my needle down, bringing it back up again. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give that a tug to pull my bobbin thread up to the top. This isn't super necessary for practice pieces, but it's a good habit to get into because when you're doing it for real, you don't wanna have thread nests at the bottom from your bobbin thread. All right, so now I'm just gonna stitch in place a couple of times to sort of anchor those threads. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and follow the line. The other thing I do, which I forgot to do, is I lower my stitch speed to medium. That allows me to sort of push my presser foot down a little bit further, but still have a nice even stitch length because you are creating your stitch length by how fast you're going in relation to how fast your machine is going. So if your stitches are too small, then you can either slow down your machine or speed yourself up or if they're too big, you need to either speed up or speed your machine up or some combination of the two. It always takes me a minute every time to get the rhythm, but you kind of want to listen as much as you are watching because your machine should sound nice and steady. All right, so I've quilted into the center of that flower. So first I'm gonna stitch around the center of my little daisy. Then I'm going to quilt my first little loop-de-loop -loop around and back to that center daisy. That circle, my second flower, petal, my third. And I'm always trying to come back to that center circle. And as I'm working, the, the dust is coming off from the chalk. So you kind of have to wing it just a little bit, just because now that I've gotten to this last petal, it's pretty much gone, like almost all of it is gone. But I was able to just in that amount of time be able to develop enough of muscle memory to be able to tell where I need to go next. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna travel along the center of that and then come on out. Speed up a little bit. I'm a little more confident on these loop-de-loops because that's a pretty easy stitch for me. And travel on to the next flower. All right, the cat continues to want to make cameos in these videos. 
I think she maybe thinks the sewing machine is purring, not sure. But anyway, let me relocate the cat and then we can continue on sewing. I zoomed in just a little bit more on the side camera so that way you can see a little bit closer since the daisy design is a little small. All right, so again, I'm gonna start off by making that loop around the circle. And then I'm gonna work out doing those petals. Always coming back to that center circle. And remember, all of these petal lines are gonna go away. They're gonna be completely gone just by the time you finish quilting that petal. So if you are not perfectly on, no big deal. Flowers are not perfect in nature, so you don't need to be perfect either. All right, so I'm coming back to the center and I'm gonna come on out the other side. Do another loop-de-loop, -loop, move on to another petal. Again, quilt that center first. center and keep working my way out working around those petals this is really a good one if you're trying to practice making small even designs this is a good one for that I know a lot of times on my home sewing machine I have a lot better time working with smaller designs than I do large designs those work better I feel like for me anyway on my long arm all right, so I'm about to continue on, and I probably should have stopped at the center of my circle to do this, but I need to move my hands because I no longer have control. So I need to come on out, and especially in the home sewing machine at this point, here's where I'm at. I've just come out of this one. And so whenever I have to go backward, I have a hard time kind of seeing. So it's because, you know, your sewing machine is in the way of looking at the line. So I kind of tend to go from the side and kind of see where I'm, I'm supposed to be going. And again, if you're not super on, as long as you have a nice smooth curve or line, it's fine. Because that line is gonna go away in the end. Another flower, go in the center, and then start doing those petals. Just keep bumping around, tiny little petals coming back to that center every time. One more. Then I'm gonna travel around that center petal and come on out in between a pair and move on to the next one. Now, if you've watched a few of these videos from me, you know that I always recommend that you stop at a point. In this one, there aren't really true points. There's like centers of petals. So that is a really good spot to start. So in this case, I have gotten to this point here. And so I quilted into the center of where this petal is. And that's where I stopped so I could reposition my hands so I can get a better grip and more control so that my petals turn out the way I want them. All right, I'm just gonna keep stitching around here, going through. We'll show you some stuff from the side as I'm working, but it's pretty much the same thing. You're gonna quilt into the center of that petal. You're going to go around the center of your flower completely. Then you're gonna do all your little petals going around and then travel around the center to come back out the other side. And you just kind of have to work with it. I've been doing this a long, long time. So if it's not as intuitive to you, that's okay. There are other stencils that you can start with. We have a whole playlist of these videos. So I'll link those in the description down below, but check it out. You are really gonna like this and it really doesn't take too long to master it. And once you have this down, you don't necessarily need the stencil anymore. You can make the petals bigger and the loop-de-loops -loops larger so that way you can cover more ground faster. This just helps you develop the muscle memory so that way you can go quilt it on your own later.
So I finished going through the sample and I'm just gonna point out with a pen so you can see a little better how this quilting path is just in case it was a little hard to see on the sewing machine. So what I did is I came in here and went into the center, quilted around the center first, and then I started bumping out around the flowers, going all the way around. Then once I'd gone all the way around, I traveled around that center flower, came out through the petals, and follow the line to go to the next bit. So you just wanna practice that and practice making the tiny little bits. Of course, some flowers look better than others, but that's the case in nature too. So if this were to be done on an all over design, on a quilt, it would just look cute with thread that blended. You can see the, the mistakes here because it's white thread on blue, um, but it's just a fun little all over meander design. It's not meant to be heirloom quilting. It's just kind of a fun thing to do. And one tip that I have for you guys that I use anytime I'm quilting is I like to listen to books on tape because then my critical part of my brain is engrossed in whatever the storyline is. So that way I can be really present with what I'm doing with quilting. When I'm not doing that, it's like when I'm filming, and that's when I tend to make mistakes. And I'll show you one here, and this is why you wanna do it. So there was a line that was like down here from another section that came off. And so I had was supposed to come up through here and move on to this petal, but I accidentally deviated and ended up over here where another line was, um, had this you know piece continued on. So I was already like, my brain was thinking about this mistake and how to get back to it. So then when I came to my next flower, this flower is, is a hot, hot mess because I was thinking about this mistake here. I wasn't in the moment thinking about quilting this flower. So if you can find something like a book on tape or a podcast or something like that, then put that in. So that way the critical part of your brain can be occupied and you can stay in the moment and then your flowers can turn out looking like this instead of like this because you're thinking about the mistake that you made back here. So that's my number one tip is definitely go with that. I really like series because then you kind of get to know the characters and you're not, you know, thinking about what's going next. I've listened to a lot of business books um, while I'm quilting. Basically anything to keep my mind busy so that way I can be in the moment. So that is a daisy background. And as you can see, the, the chalk is really mostly off in a lot of places. It was really coming off just as I was quilting. A lot of times by the time I finished the daisy, it was, was gone and where I'm still seeing it is more on the lines in between. But it really just, I'm just wiping it off with my machiner's quilting gloves and you can't even see the chalk lines here at all. So if you were a little bit off, no big deal. Nobody knows that the lines were there to start with. I hope you give this a go and you can watch all of our other free motion quilting videos as well. We've got a quilting the quilt playlist and we'll link that in the video down below. Again, this is the large background or the daisy background large and we'll have links to this in our product descriptions. Um, you can get everything you need to practice this over at our website at shop.quiltatosnovice.com. If you see a video and you wanna give it a go, that's a great way to support us to help us keep bringing you more videos. We appreciate it and we love teaching you new things and we love it when you say thank you by getting your project materials from us. Thanks so much for following along and until next time, happy quilting.